Hello and welcome back. This is part two of my Autech Research QF1A review and modifications. As we saw in uh, part one, I just did an inspection and uh, just threw out spitballed some ideas as to what I was going to do. And um, looking at the front of the panel, I, I did switch out the old switch and I've got a new one in there that works a lot easier. And I did add a light. Tried to clean up a little bit of the scratchiness and mess on there with some paint I had so it's not 100% uh, but it does look a little bit better. So I do have a uh, power light added. We take a look inside there. I've got my um, power hook up here and there's a grounding there so that when uh, I turn the unit on I do get a, a status indicator. I've also uh, changed the plugs out. I've got 3.5 millimeter jacks on here to work with more modern equipment and we can see I do have the new jack in there. So got rid of those big old clunky phono jacks cleaned it all up and I've got uh, cover painted I didn't like that uh, puke beige color so now it looks looks meaner now I like the look of it now so there we have it ready for some further testing what I'm gonna do here is I can only test uh, the uh, SSB phone feature on it I won't be testing any CW. I think this is probably where this thing really excels is on the CW filtering. So unfortunately I won't be able to show any of you that. But I'll show you how it works uh, for SSB phone. So let me hook this up to my 11 meter radio and uh, I've got some other uh, computer hookup where we can see some display and see how this guy works. Okay, that was just a brief little uh, demonstration on uh, some audio uh, filtering. I'll just show you my setup here. I'm just running 11 meter radio, Cobra 2000, and I'm just monitoring the uh, regular uh, 38 lower sideband. Uh, first off, I just wanted to show you my setup. I'm monitoring the audio output here. I've got this going into a, uh, a laptop here and I do have some software here monitoring the um, the audio output. So I think what I'd like to do is I want to hook up a uh, signal generator and then show you how things show up on the display and how these controls here interact with the uh, with the audio. What I also highly recommend is that you read the instructions and really understand what each control does. It is rather complex and the more you understand how the controls work and I find how they show up on the display is also very informative as to how you understand how this unit does work. So let me hook up a signal generator. Okay, to do any kind of demonstration that will do this device any justice, we need to have a little bit of lab conditions here and I'll uh, be able to display things on my uh, screen as well too. So what I'm attempting to do is I have a function generator and uh, not one that you would normally expect to have. I am using my smartphone. And I just have it set at a 440 hertz sine wave tone and I'm generating some white noise. So for me to turn this on I just have to click that button on or off. 
the output of my phone is feeding the inputs of the Autec and I'm looking here on this display so right now it is on off on generating white noise so the first thing I want to demonstrate is the high pass filter option so right now the unit is in the bypass mode and I am going to uh, work the uh, leave this on HP high pass and then work on a selectivity frequency and audio notch so let's go over to take a look at the display and I'll turn it on okay so the filter is just off right now and my function generator is generating a whole bunch of white noise and we can see here I've got my 440 Hertz turn tone spit it out saying right there 440 Hertz tone and the bandwidth here is from 0 to 4000. And let us turn on the Autec. Okay, there's the Autec. So that's in a high pass. We can see it's exactly doing that. It's passing the high frequencies. So right now I have the frequency at the far left. I'm going to start to rotate that counterclockwise. So right now I'm fully counterclockwise. So that's high pass. So that's fully counterclockwise. Now I'm going to go to the selectivity. It is fully counterclockwise and I'll start to turn the clockwise. So remember, this is just a white noise across the band. Okay, that's return to the fully counterclockwise. So right now, this is the notch frequency, far left control. So all the low pass is definitely really knocked down and we have a little bit of control here, high pass frequencies. So that's example number one. Let me now switch over to low pass. We can see we have our 440, 440 hertz tone there. So I'm turning the frequency control and uh, we can definitely really knock that, knock everything down. So remember this is low pass. I'm turning the uh, knock, notch frequency. It is now fully counterclockwise. Okay, third position. This is the notch filter. So this is the notch frequency that I'm controlling here. So say if I wanted to notch out the 440 hertz tone. I'm going to control the frequency control in the far right hand of the box. And we can see that it'll knock that tone right down. So if you had some tone interference or something on a specific frequency, 
and so you can knock that right down. So let's put that up to maximum again. I'm going to go to the selectivity. Okay, the fourth and last is the peak. So I'm going to peak a frequency. So our 440 hertz tone is gone and it looks like it's trying to peak on say uh, let everything through around uh, 2500. So right now I'm adjusting the notch frequency control in the far left of the box. box. Okay, so let's leave that. Selectivity, notch. So this is full counterclockwise. And here I am narrowing it down. And the last control here is the fourth one on the right. I'm fully counterclockwise. And remember, this is on peak. This is allowed certain frequencies, maximum. And this is controlling which frequency. So this will uh, sweep from 250 hertz to around 3,000. Well, probably around, uh, we can see here about 2,500. So as you can see, there's a lot of flexibility with this Autech. And for me, I'm a visual person. Seeing the display here gives me a good idea what the controls do. Without this display, the device is definitely, uh, I, I find it's a little difficult to figure out what the heck's going on. So hopefully you've been able to gain a little bit from this, as I have. And uh, that's why I like having this display on when the radio is on. Of course, under real-world conditions, listening to uh, real-world audio, things will be different. And uh, then it's a matter of a trial and error and what your ears tell you. This is what our eyes are telling us. Okay, well, I'd have to say, uh, I don't know if I've done... A demonstration any justice on this unit here but uh, I'd have to say it's better than anybody else's which I don't think there is so hopefully you got something from this thanks for watching see ya